Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to the Prog Talks, everyone. Once again with me, Uncle Prog. Uh, before we start, once again, I want to mention our little BIOS a coffee link that you can find down in this, the description of the video. If you want to support us, we're very happy about that. But with that out of the way, I have a fellow Norwegian on the Prog Talks today. Uh, and a, a beard brother, maybe <laughs> we should call it. It's uh, Kjetil Norhus from Green Carnation. How are you doing, Kjetil? Thank you. I'm, I'm quite okay. Uh, we're approaching the winter up here in Norway. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> although I'm from the south of Norway and we don't have the, the hardest winters, it's, uh, yeah, we have a few months of darkness at least ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the the typical thing when you talk about Norwegian winters, right? It's 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 getting not only colder, but it's getting darker. The days are getting very much shorter, right? Yeah, it's like it's dark when I go to work in the morning, and it's yeah. dark when I will leave work in the afternoon. So it's not really too much light going on. Yeah, and when you work inside, you sort of it, it, it's eternal darkness for for a while, right? <laughs> Yeah, which makes that's perfect for making good music, isn't it? Yes, I, I guess it does. And, and and with that, you know, we're going to talk a bit about that music. It's been 15 years since the release of Acoustic Versus. Uh, and uh, of course, now you're really releasing the album through Seasons of Mist on the 3rd of December, right? That's when the, the release is. What can you remember about, the, the you know, when you created and recorded this album? Uh why, why did you at that time decide to do like a fully acoustic album? Yeah, I think that was in the end of a period where we had released, you know, albums almost every year. I think yeah. we released five albums in, in, in five years almost yeah. or six years. And um, all those albums were really different from each other. Uh, even from the first album and up to Light of Day, Day of Darkness, which was released in 2001, the entire lineup was changed by Chort, mm. like of, obviously except for himself. Yeah. But after that, we'd been um, constantly searching for new, new sounds and new inspirations. And uh, obviously after Light of Day, Day of Darkness, we couldn't make an, another hour long song. No. So we, we, we went into this more prog rocky uh, direction. Yeah. Uh, and develop that sound to the next album. And then we had been doing so many different, you know, angles to our music that we thought maybe that doing an acoustic album, but still keeping the, the moods and the atmospheres of, of Green Carnation as people knew it uh, would be a good challenge for us. Mm. Yeah. Um, and for many people, I think I've heard it like even now that the acoustic verses is maybe the album uh, after light of day, day of darkness that that kind of reminds them most about it not because of the sound but because of the atmospheres and and the moods so yeah. yeah so it was still a green carnation like very much a green carnation album um <clears throat> and i think the problems for us came after that because we had no idea what to do after that <laughs> because kind of the yeah. the circle was was finished or ful fulfilled and uh so that ended up in staying away for 10 years yeah, I wonder, you know, did you have like any influences or inspirations when you started thinking about doing acoustic mu music where you where there's something, you know, that that sort of you not modeled yourself after, but like were influenced by when you when you started writing for the for that album? Yeah, I think maybe one of the um one of the unique things like that it's probably kind of the same in every band, but but I think like all the bands I've been in I cannot remember any bands like being so diverse when it comes to background and to influences and stuff. Yeah. So, so we did already have, have several people in the band that were like really uh, used to doing acoustic stuff. And you had a few of the guys in the band who'd never 
almost never played an acoustic guitar before, uh, which, uh-huh. which I think also is in an artistic way, kind of interesting to put together these two worlds. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I wouldn't, like I have my influences always. Uh, uh, Stan Rogler ha- has his influences, but what we decided to do on the album was that all of the band members actually contributed with writing songs and lyrics. So we have six different songwriters on that album and, and, and the kind of the challenge would always be to make it sound like one album and not, not six different albums. Exactly. And, and, and that's, that was something new for you guys as well, right? Where everyone was involved in, in some manner in, in not only writing the music, but the lyrics, like you say, and, and uh, I've read some reviews of the album, like, you know, to, to brush up on what people said about it at the time. And, and what you said now is, is, it comes up several times about how the album is written by so many you, of you guys, but still it managed to sound very, you know, whole, right? You know, it doesn't sound like six different songwriters doing six different things or whatever. You know, I, I believe even the, the um, your cellist or the guy who plays the cello on the album contributed some music, right? Yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, I actually talked to him for the first time in a while earlier today. Oh, really? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but um, no, but it's true. And basically that's always the same thing, uh, the same challenge when you record an album. Mm. Uh, It's it's like you have some ideas that might sound like in a demo might sound quite, you know, uh, different from each other, especially like if had been recorded in different studios and stuff. And you're always a bit like nervous before entering the studio if this is going to sound like totally diverse or or if you can manage to to kind of pull it all together. Yeah. And then you go to the studio and you have the same people playing the same instruments and then kind of most of the times it kind of fall, falls into place. Yeah. So uh, and it also did with this album, I think. And I guess also when you guys go into the studio and you start working on each other's ideas, there are like, you know, when you put your voice in someone else's you know, song, it certainly gets that reincarnation sound quite quickly. And the same with the guitar and the bass and everything, right? Yeah. And on the same time, I know that like, if I write something on guitar or or on piano, I give it to somebody who can play the guitar or the piano much better than me and maybe even develop it a little bit. So it it is a band effort uh, at the end of the day, of course. Yeah. Well, uh, like I mentioned, the album is being re-released now and uh, uh, by Seasonal Mist. And for the first time, I believe it's going to all is going to be on CD, of course, but also on vinyl. That must be fun to finally see your music being being released on vinyl, especially people like, you know, our age have a, a certain, yeah. you know, relation to vinyl albums. Yeah, I think if somebody told me how happy I was going to be about this when I was 15, I would kind of, because uh, I guess when I was 15, the CD was like the new big thing. It was big, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. so I wouldn't I wouldn't believe them probably, but yeah, it, it is a special thing uh, uh, f- for bands, I think, our age uh, to be able to, to release something on vinyl. Uh, we also put on a, a couple of songs that weren't on the original. Ah. It's a it's a live version on, and it's uh, uh, it's three pages of music and a, and an etched fourth page yeah. or fourth side, yeah. uh, uh, and we needed to kind of in order to to fit it all in together, we needed to reshuffle the the, the tracks, the the songs, yeah. the other tracks. So so, and also it's remastered, and it, there's a new cover art, and so it's it is a new product uh, also. So yeah. I think it complements the old one in a good way. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I, I I wanted to ask about that, of course, the, those extra tracks that you added. And this is sort of also like a collector's edition, I would say, with the, the etched vinyl and everything. So this is something even, you know, for the fan who already owned the album, if you, you know, want to have the extra tracks, if you want to have this this beautiful package, that's something you can pick up. Was it uh, Seasonal Mist who came up with the idea to re-release it or, or how did, did that come together? Because um, originally it wasn't, it wasn't on Seasonal Mist originally, right? Yeah, we, we actually released this one on our own label, uh, uh, yeah. Sub Live Productions, yeah. uh, back in back in the day. So we were quite free to do whatever we wanted with it, since uh. we owned the rights for everything and stuff. So, so I think that came up with when discussing with Seasonal Mist, our 
our plans for the next few years. Uh, it made sense to to mark the 15th anniversary yeah. with a special special edition. Uh, and obviously, Cisna Mist is also fond of vinyls, so yeah. so it was a win win situation, really. Yeah, and the vinyl thing is sort of over the last few years becoming really big again. So I guess you know any label that releases like especially if it's a limited run they most often it sells out quite quickly so i'm guessing season of were very happy to be able to get hold of this music and i wasn't aware that that was your own label so that sort of left you uh you know in a position where it was like you say easier right to yeah it seems like like labels and and people owning you know rights for music are like generally quite positive to releasing stuff on vinyl. Yeah. Uh, but it was even easier for us the, for us this time since we since it was our own label obviously. Yeah. I think the only times you really hear about issues is when of course if big labels are involved it's more you the legal part of it is is more challenging maybe but also you have yeah. some of those small labels like <laughs> when you know in the 90s and stuff some of those people are just impossible to get hold of the label oh yeah folded like uh, 15 years years ago and you you don't know how to contact them so i could see how that would be a problem for some some bands that yeah they change uh, change the email address during the years and stuff yeah. and, and then it's totally impossible to get hold of yeah exactly that's so, probably that's probably the case uh <laughs> many in many different uh I cases think, i guess i think so yeah so uh when when you were writing the acoustic music and you went into the studio and you were you know and you guys were i would say like quite well versed already with the recording as an electric band were there like surprises or challenges that you hadn't you know foreseen when you when you were doing things uh, acoustically or yeah if i remember correctly we we recorded most of of the instruments in Stein Rogers, uh living room ah, uh, on yeah. in like a home studio yeah we did we did the um <clears throat> the drums and maybe some some other stuff in uh, at Enrich Kirchesula studio uh, at the dub studios uh, so and that was kind of a new thing for us it's it's much more common today i think to to record different places and then I mix agree. it all together i agree but yeah. we we like the last album we did before that we the entire band was down in france for the entire period you uh. know so so that was a completely different it, we even made um made a lot of of the of the the um the quiet offspring is the name of that last yeah. album before yes. acoustic verses uh like i would say maybe one third of that album was even made in the studio oh, so yeah, you, so, so you this wrote, was different we yeah you broke yeah. in the studio yeah yeah um but this was totally different when you know uh i was doing my parts and 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 everything we had been um we we hadn't really rehearsed in advance we had um, everybody distributed all the demos to yeah. all the people in the band, and we uh, kind of uh, prepared individually. So that was also a new kind of way of doing it for us. Um, but I think it worked out fine. Uh, it was kind of a quite relaxed atmosphere, obviously, doing it in the living room of one of the one of the band guys. Members, but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so it was a. It was a good experience. We all, we had some, you know, strings there that was also recorded in a proper studio uh, with mm -hmm. proper microphones and everything. So it was like a joint thing. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, that was, like you said, it's it's quite common now to, to do these home style recordings. Maybe a band, like you say, go to a studio for the drums, but the rest can be recorded, you know, in your bedroom or wherever. So... Yeah. I'm guessing, did that also mean that you had some time, you spent some time sort of experimenting? You mentioned that some of the guys hadn't even played an acoustic guitar much or... Yeah, yeah. And we, we had to, to be honest with you, we, we had to see like, is this working out? Mm -hmm. uh, if not, let's do something else. Um, and we're in a lucky situation in Green Carnation because I think between us, we can play probably 20 or 25 instruments. Yeah. And the bass, the bass player is also one of the best guitar players yes. I know. Uh, the keyboard player is also a great bass player. Uh, sorry, a great guitar player, and he also used to play the saxophone. And uh, he's also a good singer. And so, so it's not. 
I can't remember in detail how how we did that, but but I, I do remember that we mixed a little bit and changed instruments <laughs> from song to song. I see. Yeah. Just seeing what worked out best, and yeah. and I guess I guess it's a good situation to be in for a band uh, with not you know having, for example, a guitarist uh, hearing that somebody else is playing that guitar much better, and then quit the band or something because <laughs> that was no problem for us because everybody's kind of relaxed when it comes to that. I see. Yeah. Well, I guess also, you know, you, you had the chance to do that because you wasn't in a studio watching your money sort of tick away. Right. So if you were yeah. like saying you let's you, you try this part now, you, you had the time for it. Yeah, we did. We did. And that was also a new thing for us, uh, which made the entire process quite enjoyable, I think for, for everybody. Yeah, I, I, I would uh, gather, but you know, um, let's move on from the album back then and, and sort of what's going on right now, because you, uh, announced a tour today, actually, when we're recording this interview that you're going to do, uh, I would say a small tour for the acoustic yeah. versus, you know, what can yeah. you tell me about how that came to, together and how is, you know, preparing for acoustic tour? I guess it's a bit different than preparing for a full like electric band tour. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this has been two years of everything, uh, all live plans being uh, postponed and yeah. being uh cancelled and stuff so so we we originally tried to like the original plan was to do this um early this year early yeah. this year or yeah. or maybe even this autumn like oh, I see yeah but see. but when we saw how everything was <laughs> was uh, going on yeah. like with everything going on with covid and everything we talked to uh Sisnamist and and asked them to to postpone the the release so we could maybe do a tour late this year mm -hmm. and then it's just been going on and going on of course and and so so we needed to wait until well, early next year with a with the tour um we also talked to doomstar uh, our booking agency and yep. said that okay we are gonna re release an acoustic album so maybe this would be like <laughs> the combination of different uh um arguments would be to do something in theaters where people can sit down. You know, that was at least in Norway, that was, those were the first gigs allowed. Yes. And those will yeah. be the last gigs to be, you know, canceled again, if that happens, yeah. God forbid. But um, so it was kind of to be on the safe side, but luckily uh, it, it was like to, to play acoustic versus on theater is theaters. The, it's a good idea anyway. So, so we also didn't want to include like, too many countries because of all the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So we thought that like the Scandinavian countries would be or like the Scandinavian and Nordic countries. And, and we, we also have one gig in, in Hamburg yeah, you have one uh, on that yeah. tour, yeah. one, one German gig or else it's three in Norway. It's Hamburg, Copenhagen, Stockholm, and Helsinki. Yeah. So, and so uh, that, that needed, I think it needed to be that way when the world was kind of didn't help us at all exactly. with anything for a couple of years. So <laughs> it's not a lack of ambitious ambitions because um, to answer the second part of your question, it's um, something after green carnation coming back in 2016 that we've like focused more on than ever before is, is, you know, the, our expectancy to ourselves when it comes to the levels of performance, both on album and, and live, not least live. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a special set. It's going to be a set that, um, that we're also going to try and create something new. Mm. Uh, we haven't really decided exactly what, but we have people in the band that can create something new every day, which doesn't have to be the, the same ah. every day. Uh, so we are thinking about maybe giving this, like a part of the show to, and then just see what happens. <laughs> so we're in the middle of planning everything now. Uh, I see. The tour is in just three months or something, I think. Yep. Uh, yeah. So so we we have like we're gonna put in an, a lot of time and effort in in doing something that people will remember for a long time. And that's, you know, I think that's the green, con it's the more, more is more thing, like the green connection way of thinking. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to be this, the world's biggest production, but uh, we're going to do what we do best, I think.
I agree. It, it's going to be something memorable. And I think also with you guys, you have this um, tendency, I would say, to do like this quite unique experiences. So like with the, your concerts with the Light of Day, Day of Darkness, you know, and also this now, uh, because uh, from what I understood, we talked a bit before uh, that these will be the shows you do with the acoustic verses now. You, you're not like planning to do a, a bigger tour later in the year or anything, right? No, that's at least not the plan right now. Uh, we do have other plans for the rest of the year, and then we're gonna do, yeah, you know, we're gonna do Prog Power Europe, for example. Yeah. That's not gonna be acoustic yeah. because I think we're, we're gonna try and look forward to 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 the next uh, few, uh, f- like the next few years with yeah. with the next uh, you know version of our live set. And it's not so easy practically to combine the acoustic stuff with the uh, with the uh, other stuff. So, so I think we we're, we're gonna have to to do those gigs in January, February, and the one in March, mm-hmm. um, and then look look ahead. If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures, and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, theprogspace.com. Well, that that sounds like the place to be then. If you you (laughs) want to experience something special, then be there but you know you guys are also playing our uh, prog space online festival that's yeah. going to be be on the 19th and 20th of november not to let out too many surprises but can you say like a little bit about what people can expect from you there yeah it's going to be something from the acoustic verses i can say that yeah uh, and it's something like with a it's something we've never done before uh it's a um, different lineup than uh, than normal than people would maybe expect. We're only four persons, oh. and it was a really unique experience uh, recording that because maybe I shouldn't tell everything, but but it, it was recorded in a way that I think was like drawing the the nerve out of the song in a way that I've never experienced before. Uh, so I'm really 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 happy about how it turned turned out, yeah. and I hope it's gonna yeah. be. Uh, like maybe a diff, different kind of thing on on a festival with lots of lots of creativity and stuff i think we're i think our our um our contribution is um yeah something different hopefully yeah and i, I also think that you know since you're doing this limited run of uh, of uh, you know uh, the the little tour that you're doing you know you guys have fans all over the world and so this is a chance to sort of see a little bit of what you might you know not be able to go to do so you know the event uh, will be in the description so for anyone i would say click you know on the event and and sign up to go and see reincarnation when they play for the prog space online festival it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome (laughs) yeah well looking forward to that Yeah, so am I, so am I. Uh, Let's move on a little bit from the acoustic verses, because I also want to talk a little bit about the album you released last year, you know, Leaves of Yesteryear. Uh, There was quite a long break between, you know, the acoustic verses was actually the last, you know, full-length album you released, and then not 15 years, but 14 years, I guess, until you returned with Leaves of Yesteryear. You know, yeah. I'm sure you can't go into all of it, but what happened in the between there? <laughs> yeah, first of all, we we were away, away from basically from 2006 to 2016. Exactly. So that's why there were no albums in that period. We had ba- basically broken up. Uh, um, but in 2014, we were invited to do one festival uh, where we did the Under the Dam the acoustic uh, DVD. Yes. Uh, we were the first band who ever played under that dam and uh, they were going to tear the dam down. So now that area doesn't really, well, it exists, but underwater. So they were going to do the last version of that festival. And that was kind of a good enough excuse for us to try and see how it was to play together again. Yeah. And it was really amazing. So, so 
So we kind of tried to find another excuse to get back together. And then the 15th anniversary of Light of Day, Day of Darkness came up uh, in 2016, which was a, a good enough excuse to get back together, <laughs> at least for a year. Yes. And then see how it was for a little bit more than one gig. Yeah. So, And the feedback and everything like that in 2016 was so amazing that we we decided to take our time. Uh, we decided, you know, to to put the, the ambitions on on the right level, yeah. Uh, which isn't anymore to you know grow huge and and start headlining big festivals and stuff. It's it's more about you know internal ambitions mm. to to make um, better music than ever before and to do better gigs than ever before. Uh, we have a band that's like ten years or, or fifteen years more experienced as yeah. as musicians yeah. and as people and everything, and try to. <clears throat> We also try to kind of have a little bit more of an analytic, an analytic approach yeah. to see what, like to to kind of figure out what is reincarnation really about, you know, and try to focus on on the stuff that makes us stand out from other bands. We were searching in the, all of our first five albums, like we were searching constantly for stuff. We found stuff on each and every album, and we tried to maybe try to gather our most positive sides, take 15 years with experience and, and put it all into a, a, like a fresh wrapping. And that became the, the leaves of yesteryear album. It's, it's because I think it's easy for people still to hear what band this is, uh, even 15 years after the last album. Um, and yeah, it was, it was more of a, an analytic way of, you know, more like philosophical way of starting the process. So we, we kind of knew exactly what direction we wanted to, to, to pull, um, to pull it into. And, um, we were extremely critical to ourselves when it came to what was going to be on the album. We, there's only five songs on the album. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, it could have been 10 because we had plenty of more material, but, but we needed the album to be exactly how it is. Uh, we didn't need, we didn't want any fillers, for example, because every song that's on the album is on the album because of something. Um, so yeah, it was an interesting process and it was a, like a big kick to, to, uh, to, to release it in May last year. Although obviously in March, something, something came up, uh, which made a lot of our plans, uh, in 2020 and 21 kind of go, go down the drain. But, but I still think we got a lot of attention, uh, and we got a lot of respect for the new album. Uh, and I don't know if like if people had time to to check it out more <laughs> uh, because of COVID. You know, you never know. But uh, no. at least like both ourselves and our label were kind of really happy with the with the reception. Like extremely happy with the reception. And uh, yeah, well, the yeah, the the album ended up on so many you know best of lists of the year, and you know all of us at the Prog Space absolutely loved it. And like yeah. you can, like you say, you can sort of see or hear that that the green carnation DNA for sure in it. But every time you guys come back, there's something new to discover. There's something new that happens. So so, yeah. and I'm I'm wondering then that because then uh, again, I guess about one year ago you released a single, and uh, yeah. which is called the world without the view, right? It's almost yeah. 10, 10 minutes of a beautiful single. And so was that material that was left over from the, the sessions or was it written new after the release of Leaves of Yesteryear? Yeah, that that was uh, written and arranged and rehearsed and recorded and released during lockdown, basically. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I remember me and Stan Rogo, who's done the most like the composing on that album, most of it trying out like how on earth can we compose a song without being in the same room? Because it was like really strict, even in Norway at the yeah. time. Uh, so it was about like trying to do this, these chats and stuff, and it didn't work out at all because of the latency and everything. So we struggled quite a lot. Uh, there were some long mails being written like after, like after 
48 seconds we need to try this and that instead bam 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 boom 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 and like trying to <laughs> to figure out eventually uh after a month or two with the with this we we were allowed again to to meet up yeah, yeah so me and him went to to the mountains uh to uh to a cabin and and um and did the rest of the composing there uh we managed to gather the entire band in a big like uh, venue uh, in order to to rehearse during covid um and managed to go to the studio in september and it was released in december uh yeah it, it wasn't something that was planned but it was a, i don't know if you had the same same feeling but like let's go, let's just get through 2020 and 21 is going to be okay that yeah. was the general feeling i yeah. think last year and then 2021 came and it, everything just became worse so so yeah um yeah so this year has been very difficult for yeah. for us uh we're now uh in november yes and yes. all the members in green carnation haven't been in the same room once this year uh we, we had this huge release party idea Last year we were gonna we had invited Tiamat and we had invited uh, Anneke von Giersbergen mm. to be our guests in our hometown. Uh, that was supposed to be in in May around the release. It was postponed twice. Uh, then Anneke had to pull out because uh, she couldn't come because of all the postponements, mm. and we got Kariru um, Slotten instead of. Yeah. Uh, and then we needed to strip down everything because from 500 and went down to 200 from 200 to 100 from 100 to 50 uh and then we ended up with planning to do four gigs in two days with 50 capacity and then the norwegian prime minister said that people shouldn't go between cities in Norway, we shouldn't travel to other yeah, cities. Exactly. And we saw that we, we'd been selling tickets to all these other cities. Yeah. Uh, and and then the culture minister came and said, like, play gigs, play gigs. And the prime minister said, don't travel, no. don't travel. So we had to we had to cancel it in the end. And after yeah. that, actually, I think the air went out of the balloon, like, like properly. I yeah, do exactly. think that at least I have uh, thought about just giving up, to be honest, because... Um, you give so much from you give so much of yourself when operating on a level like we do which is yeah. a non-commercial level everything has to be you know driven out of you know pleasure yeah. and when the pleasure is gone there's not enough not enough left it's at least no money you know so that can motivate no. for bands like us so but and that makes it even you know nicer like today to be able to look forward to be able to to announce seven gigs early next year yeah. and let's yeah. just cross our fingers that that's going to happen without too many complications and um and look forward to the next few years yeah well, yeah i agree you know it's been tough i'm so glad that things are you know looking up that some bands like you guys are able now to start planning actually going out and playing your music to pe to people and uh you know what can you say? I think so many musicians, especially on this level that you guys are as well, that does this for, like you say, the motivation is, you know, the artistic side of it. It's the enjoyment of it. So, you know, what about, um, I, I thought maybe when I heard that uh, last single that it would be part of a new album. Uh, and I'm not going to, you know, bother you too much on that. But do you have any plans coming up for new, new reincarnation music? Yeah, um, in 2017, uh, after deciding that we wanted more than just playing those comeback gigs, yeah, we made a we made a five six year plan, uh, and then we started to work, you know, um, with getting getting you know partners like, for example, Sister Mist. We yeah. actually we we presented our plans for them and they thought it sounded great so so we did a five album uh contract with them yeah uh, the acoustic versus is the second one so we have three more albums coming up uh 
we got this, uh, like we got publishing and we signed a contract with Doomstar Bookings. And so now we have the people around us that can help us fulfilling those plans. Obviously in 2020, everything changed. Of course. I don't think the, I don't think the, um, what's in the plans necessarily has changed so much. We just needed to postpone everything. Yeah. You know, everything. Yeah. So I cannot really say when, uh, when there's going to be new music from, from green carnation, uh, to be honest with you, because that was supposed to be on a time that it's not going to happen anymore. Exactly. But also when writing, um, leaves of yesteryear, we did also write music for a more long-term project, which, Hmm. which uh, we're pro- probably going to announce if we find the motivation. I hope, I well, we're, we're kind of starting to find the motivation now, I hope. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, there's going to be more news about that. But the plan is still to, to more, uh, record and release yeah. lots of more <laughs> new music within, I don't know, how long. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to hear, you know, and, and let's hope <laughs> these shows and everything gives the motivation, you know, to you know when you get out there and see the audience i'm sure you know a lot of joy in music is gonna r- return um, so. well that sort of brings us to the end of uh, our talk uh, for you guys listening and watching you should of course follow green carnation on their social media all the links will be in the description and watch them on the upcoming prog space online festival uh, also uh, you might want to pick up a copy of leaves of yesteryear it's an amazing album or pre-order the new acoustic verses from Season of Mists. Once again, all links in the description. So uh, thank you so much for being on the Prog Talks with me, Jettil. It's a pleasure. For those of, us, uh, of you out there who enjoy what we're doing with the Prog Talks, you know, we have this Bios a Coffee link, but also a like and a subscription helps us out a lot. You know, until next time, stay safe and keep spreading that Prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.